How's it going everyone? We're here to check out the potential skins for this next week. And if you're new, just to explain what that means, it does not mean these hundred all skins are going to be in the store or ever will be. It just means these are the ones that have the highest chance as per the developer's request. So uh, there you go. That's uh, basically how that is. So eight to ten are picked every week by the game's lead dev and creator, Helk, and uh, those are the ones that make it in, and then it pretty much moves on. Unless it's part of a really popular set, it might have a chance way later during a complete the sets kind of week. But besides that, then it's pretty much move on to the next week and the next hundred set of skins. So starting off, we've got a cap for you. It is the Swag Duck. And uh, yeah, as you can see, it kind of has like, you know, a familiar kind of back design there. And then the front of the duck, I don't know, it kind of reminds me of a mix between something that has to do with like the mighty ducks and also daffy duck a little bit but i mean not in a way like oh they copied i just mean i'm trying to figure out what it reminds me of but um you know in a good way there you go but that does it there next we've got some more snow stuff for you with the bandana and poncho from the snow leopard set and yeah you know there's black spots which kind of you know make the white not as white but honestly, there's a lot of rocks and stuff out in the snow biome, so this could still pretty much be a viable, you know, potential camo in the snow biome kind of set. Next up, we've got the Canadian Tuxedo, which is, uh, well, it's some hide shorts and vest made into denim. And uh, there you have that there. The clipping is pretty much just that that's not their fault. That's how it is. The only thing is maybe the kind of open front does look a little bit weird on the female character, but uh, it looked fine on the male character, so I don't know. But one way or another, it's kind of funny to see the setup as denim. Next up, we've got the Concentric version 4, and uh, this has two versions of it. One is kind of just a more updated version of the original design. You've got the cracked armored plating around the outside, and then you've just got this really nicely updated kind of mesh behind it, as you can see. And then version 2 is where it's kind of inverse, where the majority is covered by the armor plating, and then the mesh is the actual cracked design. So I don't know, which version do you guys like better? The original with the armor plating on the outside with the cracks, or the armor plating with the cracks on the inside for the mesh? Speaking of snow camo, we have another contender with the white paratrooper set. As you can see here, it's pretty much just whites and grays. There's a little bit of color here and there, like the little tags are a kind of yellow and black. You have some padding down on the knees, some big old pockets, again with the tags. In the back, you do have a little more kind of grayscale going on, but definitely still a very good set for hiding in the snow. Next up, we have the Kill Suit set. This one also has two versions, a clean and a bloody. So you'll see the pants have the clean version where it just kind of looks like you're wearing this plastic suit over the regular, you know, rust pants. And then up here, you've got a rust hoodie with a plastic pants and a plastic undershirt kind of thing going on and uh yeah it's definitely crazy with the blood covering it's one of those kind of things that just kind of fits right into rust you know a dexter style serial killer suit kind of thing going on with plastic wrap next we have the dragon jacket by red rex and it is a new version of the jacket from the dragon set and it just kind of looks like a cape really it, it just has just a nice design i think this is really epic looking it still has a hood and uh, yeah I, I just think a lot of people would really like this one if it popped into the shop next up we do have two high qual sets for you this week the first one is the crimson wraith set and it just has this crazy face mask i think it's really really cool looking has some cool dormants on the side almost kind of like octopus tentacles and then you've got the front here it kind of has like a, uh, almost looks like wood plating, but it's leather. So I think that's really well done. You can see it much better here on the back with the leather straps and plates. And there you have it. All right, and last but not least, we have the White Core High Qual Set. So we've been seeing a lot of this one, and it's been, you know, set up also to be a good snow camo. And uh, yeah, you can see right here, you've got pretty much just a white plate carrier with some extra pouches on the front. N17 main right there. Uh, then you've got the quirk written there on the one band and back here on the extra padding in the back. And then you've got this like old human skull plate thing going on for the face mask. 
with some kind of you know like kind of techy upgraded uh, little pieces of metal you know chunked on here and there definitely has a very unique look for the face mask all right next up we can jump into our deployables and first up we've got some sleeping bags for you the first one is the three dalmatian sleeping bag yeah maybe not 101 but as you can see if you look at the end here each little ribbed section of a uh, ribbed section creased section of the sleeping bag is a little uh, dalmatian so there you go definitely funny little thing uh, hopefully no real dalmatians were harmed in the making of the sleeping bag especially since there aren't any in rust uh, <laughs> moving on we've got the toxic barrel sleeping bag man this thing just looks like it's oozing i mean it literally looks like there's just ooze sitting in a crunched barrel i don't know if that's something you want to sleep in but hey it is rust right moving along we got another one for you and this is a tombstone sleeping bag it pretty much just predicts uh, where we're heading to anyways in the first place right so there you go the rest in peace tombstone Moving on, we do have a single small box for you this week, and it is the high qual base box. So we did see the stone one make it in. I don't know if we'll see any of the other ones, but it, hey, it is a nice little collection and a great continuation. Also, each one kind of has something different going on. As you can see, this one looks like it has a farm going on inside. Then if we move on, we've got some large boxes, starting with the blueprint guns box. There we go. <laughs> then moving on, we've got a continuation in the Tomb of the Octopus for you with the large box. And we've got some beautiful art over here for you guys with the hunting chest. It's got this beautiful deer and the house and landscape just sculpted all along it. Definitely a very, very beautifully done box. Then moving on, we've got one more for you, the Ancient Evil Chest. And uh, yeah, it's got some necromancer kind of stuff going on. You also have some kind of like a leaded glass, a little bit of a look to it. Definitely a very cool looking one. Then we've got some furnaces. First one here is going to be a Tiki Furnace for you, simply just called Tiki Furnace. Then the next one here is all scrapped together, and it has its own little kind of face and teeth going on, the Creepy Furnace. As you can see, the whole thing seems to be sewn together. There's belts and all sorts of stuff used to make said monster. Then over here, we've got some rugs. The first one's going to be the clan base rug. This has been a very cool little set because as you hit the lights, you can see that the various different uh, light sources, whether they're a fluorescent kind of flash flashlight or electricity, or if they're, you know, something produced from a furnace, lights up dif differently. And I'm having terrible talking today so bad, but there's always a little something going on in the scenes. Then over here, we've got a funny little thing. Everyone's seen the meme, you know, it's just fine and everything's on fire. And this rug just definitely kind of captures the fire from that uh, meme. So I'm pretty sure that's the idea they're going for here with the fire splash rug. Then we've got some roofing material with the tree bark rug. You could cover up your whole base to kind of give it a uh, old kind of tree look or that kind of wooden shingle kind of thing. And last for our rugs, we do have a rainbow rug and it kind of looks like a rainbow color target. Simple, but bright. Moving on to our doors, we have a very beautifully kind of painted old wooden door for you here with the cloudy wooden door. If we go ahead and take the back, you can see that uh, pretty much the same kind of design, just a little bit more beaten up and so forth. Then we do have a double wooden door for you this week, and it is the ascetic double wooden door. There you go. You have some skulls with some candles, which do light up. We'll show you here later. Moving on to our sheet metal doors, we've got the hazmat sheet metal door. Bamboo mahjong door then we've got the telephone booth version 2 cute mood sheet metal door neon entrance got that kind of double door thing going open but it's not the MLRS Raider um, MLRS is also backwards and that's why you can't put writing on single sheet metal doors so i just realized that uh, artists may want to fix that can't put writing 
Then over here, we've got one last one with the Ripple Sheet Metal Door. Definitely has a very kind of cool effect. Moving on, we do have a single a single double door for you this week, not to make it sound more confusing. The Bullet Hell Metal Door, in the continuation with that chippy theme. Then we've got our garage doors. First one here, we've got a little Neon Hazzy for you with the Neon Hazmat version 2. Then we've got the Killbox Garage Door, and this thing just has a crazy kind of military look to it. Very kind of military storage garage, uh, even has that look of an old truck back. And then it does have a little bit of transparency, but it's pretty much just for light. I mean, your Rust character isn't going to be really peering through there, and neither is Raider. Then up over here, we've got ourselves more garage doors. We've got the On Fire Garage Door, in honor of the new flamethrowers. Well, change the flamethrower and the new flamethrower. Then we've got ourselves the steel garage door. Lumnia garage door. And we've got the facet garage door. Face it. No, facet. It is facet. There we go. <laughs> Telling you guys I'm having a problem today. Then we've got the rustiki garage door. Definitely a mean looking tiki going on there and last but not least the car service garage door now this one I might not have a chance just because of the tires and everything look a little flat also the wrenches look a little bit funky but uh, it's definitely still a cool design so I want to you know be sure to show it still and then last but not least we do have a single armor door for you the first contact armor door and we'll go ahead and pop on through the back there to show you that and we can kill our lights. And take a look at all the glow we have. Oh, and I was wrong. I guess the candles do not line up on that door, so my mistake there, guys. We do come over here. The flame rug does light up. As well as that clan base rug. You see what I mean about the lights earlier. Then this furnace does have, like, these little baubles or little glowing kind of uh, little nodes all around it there, which is kind of cool. Nothing too particularly special with this. Just a normal front glow. Very beautiful. Looks lit up like an old painting. Love that. And it's only the top that's lit up on that one, which is worth mentioning. And there's that toxic barrel. It's even crazier at night. All right, let's jump into those tools and weapons. And first off, we've got ourselves a little hammer for you, the Sun Priest Hammer. Looks kind of like an old mossy block with a very angry sun design on there. Then we've got some metal tools for you this week. First one starting off here is gonna be the Dwarf Legend Hatchet. As you see, the actual handle looks kind of like it's made out of dragon scale or some kind of reptile scale. And then you've got a nice kind of golden blade. Of course, you have the matching pick to go alongside with it. Then our next set is going to be the Damascus tools. Definitely a nice design, carrying along with the rest of the set. And there's the pick. Then we have another set. I told you lots of metal tools this week for you. This is the camping set very kind of modern clean look to it and there's the matching pickaxe to go with it and our last metal tool set for this week is the royal snake set as you'll see it's got a nice like snake carving on the handle there and there's the matching pick 
Moving on, we've got a crazy little bone knife for you right here, man. This thing has a uh, face and teeth, and it just looks all sorts of stabby. Well, its name is Knifey, so there you have that. <laughs> then moving on, we've got a bow for you this week, the Zebra Stripes bow. And it's, well, pretty much just a zebra print bow. I mean, that's pretty straightforward, right? And last in this group, we've got the first of our pythons for this week, the Jungle Python. Nice little continuation in the Jungle set. We haven't seen additional pieces from this set accepted, but who knows, maybe Hulk will jump back to it. How do you guys feel about it, especially with its kind of green dots for the site, even though they don't glow? Next up, we have the Pharaoh's Wrath. Python, and this has a nice kind of clean, almost blue steel kind of thing going on there. It's it's a very blue-gray kind of color with a nice gold accents. Aiming down the sides, you do have gold tip to the sights. And there we go for our reload. Next, we've got a sap for you. This is the Aristocratic, but uh, we, it looks a lot like the porcelain set i mean the colors and everything and it's the same kind of d design you know like to look like china so i don't know um you know fine china like dishes china is what i mean and uh, yeah i don't i don't know if this one has a chance since that's a thing but hey you know it's still here you do have blue and gold for the sites and there we go for our reload Next, we've got some Tommies for you, starting off with the Prototype 7164. We've seen a couple of pieces from this set pop in, so I wouldn't be surprised to maybe see this Thompson make its way in. Aiming down the sights here, you do have a nice yellow tip against the chrome and Mr. Friendly Robot that you should be familiar with if you know the set. Next, we've got the Skyborn Thompson, and this one just has a beautiful kind of skyscape drawn across it. And, uh, yeah, there's a little bit of, I guess, maybe sand or maybe yellow sunshine. I'm not sure what the whole yellow part is. But one way or another, it does give a nice little contrast. Aiming down the sides here, you do have a kind of bit darker blue tip to the side, but pretty much just blue on blue for the sides there. Last for this group of Thompsons, we have the Flame Thompson. Very simple name, but, you know, pretty straightforward idea. you got hot wire rod flames and a... Flat matte black Thompson. Aiming down the sides here, you do have a nice red tip with a little bit of yellow peaking there against the black backside. Moving on, we've got a custom SMG for you, the Crusher custom SMG to be specific. Definitely has a crazy little thing going on. As you can see here, with a face and racing stripes and it's all cobbled together with metal pieces, aiming down you can see it has yellow sights against the kind of yellow orange and a crazy second face there for you. All right, next up, we've got a couple more customs for you. The next one here is the Bullseye Thompson, which is a continuation of the Bullseye set. Kind of has a old beat up, you know, it used to maybe be a nice colored, uh, bright color chrome, and now it's kind of a dirty, uh, been spray painted over black a few times maybe. You can see that's even fading already back to its original kind of chrome color. A little neon skull and so forth. Aiming down the sides here, you do have a bright neon, but not glowing sight. And there's our reload. For our last custom SMG this week, you've got a very kind of chromed up one. It's simply called the Advanced SMG. Has nice little grips of, you know, kind of nice rubber look to it. Then you kind of got that diamond plated steel and a little more of it there, as you can see, and chrome sights with a little skull and a target going on for the back there. Moving on to our MP5s, our first one is the High Voltage Version 2, and uh, yeah, this one just has some really bright colors going on. You've got that aqua versus that uh, bright kind of pink magenta going on there, and now nah, you can call that pink, honestly. And uh, you've got some nice little details in the center here with kind of little high voltage parts and the wires. The naming down the sights, not really anything going on, unfortunately. You do have a nice red tip, but they could have put a little bit of something in the empty space there. Change the color of the screw to match some of the other colors or something, but uh, is a little bit just plain there. Next, we've got the Overkill MP5, and as you can see here, it continues with the set. It looks like they're going with the blue color one, because I'm not seeing the orange version pop up with this one. Aiming down the sides here, you do have a orange kind of bottom there to the side. Uh, it's kind of a lot of weird kind of color clipping going on there. 
Not sure if that was done on purpose. Next, we've got another MP5. It's the Lost Technology. And uh, yeah, it just looks like gold is being melted over the top of this. And there's a circuit kind of poking through there. And uh, if you look at the MP5, everything's kind of a little bit more future techy, especially if you kind of look at the stock there. You can see some more circuits popping through. Aiming down the sides, you do have a black tip versus the gold. Then moving on, we move up to our rifles with a Crystal Shine SAR for you. Has little pieces of red, I'm assuming ruby, kind of jutting out of it there. And then you've got these cracks all through like the rest of the set. Nice little red tip to the SAR. And it does only come in a stockless version, which is worth noting. Moving to our ARs, we've got the My Little Bear AK, and uh, well, it's a fuzzy little AK with a bear print and a really crazy little bear face there. And uh, Magenta Tip versus the brown and off-white for the site, which is very different. Moving on, our next one here is the Stained Skull AR, and man, this is just a beautiful work of art. You've got that stained glass design with the, uh, it, it almost looks like bronze kind of around the edges, but it might be more kind of gold. I think it's more gold, but it's just the whole thing is really cleanly done. The sculpting is just beautiful, and the line work is amazing. Aiming down the sides here, you do have a darker tip versus the gold kind of bronzy color there. Next, we have the Carved Marble AK-47, and the whole thing looks like it weighs a ton because it's made out of marble. Don't know if you guys have ever picked up anything made of marble, but it is a very, very heavy stone. And uh, yeah, there you go. It's a very unique design, and it's hard to pull off that look of marble without it just kind of looking like cheap plastic, and uh, I think they did a really good job with that, for sure. There we go for our reload. Next, we've got a continuation of the Cursed set with the Cursed AR. It has a little bit of that fabric torn and tossed across the top there. Some old nasty looking belts, anarchy symbols, and everything you would expect from the set. And if you notice, it even kind of looks like a little slimy creature face of the cloth back here. You do have a nice red tip to the site. And there's our reload. Then we've got a Fossils version 2 for you. This one, I think they really did a good job of updating the sculpting. Looks a lot less flat, and the sand itself also looks a lot more sandy and gritty. Uh, definitely more kind of sandstone look to it, instead of kind of uh, blurriness that the original version had. Aiming down the sides here, you do have a uh, kind of shrunken down cow skull. And a slightly less tan bit to the tips there, but depending how the light hits it, not too much differentiation between the sides. Then moving on, we've got the Resurrection AR, and uh, yeah, it's got some, uh, some runes and stuff on there. <laughs> the whole thing kind of just looks like a really clean cut AR, but it looks like it also has some sinister stuff going on. A weird glow on the tip of the barrel there and uh, aiming down the side so you can definitely see some more of those runes and there is a little tip of red for the side. Our next AR is the Jade AR and it's been revisited and redone. A little bit less red on it and uh, the carvings have been changed up. It also comes in a stock and stockless version. I feel like there's also a little bit less kind of gold to it but that might just be me. Not remembering it. it has been a while but the main thing is this custom sight as you can see there's a cutout version and a regular and uh, yeah man uh, there you go custom sight a lot of people dig these how do you feel about that on the jade ar then we've got some art for you with the metsiku satumi oh boy you guys are really trying to kill me with names now now, now we're dipping into, I, I think it's Japanese, so <laughs> thank you. All right, one way or another, very cool. You got this uh, crazy skeleton guy on the side here. Kind of reminds me of an Oni, but I'm sure whatever the name of the gun is, is what it actually is. I'm not familiar with the exact of it. 
but definitely very cool design and it has kind of like a faded almost corroded uh, jade kind of feel and you've got gold and green and red to the sides there Next, we've got some LRs for you. The first one is going to be the Brutalist LR. And yeah, it's got chunks of concrete and rebar and just old metal here and there. It's been spray painted and beat up and there's tape hanging on it. This, the whole thing just really fits rust. And down the sides, you do have just rusty, rusty sights. Looks like there maybe used to be some blue paint there, but it is long gone. Moving on, we've got a, another very cool looking LR for you. It's the Police LR from the Police set. And this has been a very popular set whenever pieces make it in. So hopefully this one has a chance this week. Aiming down the sides here, the ring is a little bit bland. I do wish there was maybe some yellow popped in there. But hey, you can kind of see the tip is supposed to be yellow. But with shading and rust, it almost turns completely black depending on the angle it's hit there. All right, then we have our next LR here from the Blackstone set, so it'd be pretty familiar to everyone as we've had a few pieces of this pop its way on in as well. Aim down the sights, black on black on black, which is usually what you can expect from this set. Then we've got another LR. Our last one here is going to be the Overgrown Antique, and the whole thing just looks like an old, completely rusted LR, and then it has this weird kind of creepy vine thing growing around it and the vine does look a little flat in some places but i mean it's really hard to make something pop i think they did a decent job on it aiming down the sides here you just have a rusty old sight going on last for our guns we've got ourselves the chameleon l96 definitely a very nice design to fit onto this gun translated beautifully and as like the rest of the set depending how light hits it it changes color of course aim down the sights here and eh, you have your kind of typical sight nothing too fancy going on but most times this thing's gonna have a scope on it anyways then we do have two different satchels for you this week one is a continuation in the snake bite set with the snake bite satchel and it does have glow as you can see here with the snake eyes as the rest of the set and then our final bit for this week is the first aid kit satchel which i mean it's so ironic right you just gotta love that idea so there you have it everybody thanks for watching sound off down in the comment section below which ones do you think you'll be picking up if they make it into the store and which ones are you hoping will the most always love hearing that feedback from you thanks for watching as always and stay rusty